Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things. Artworks, for example. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. And in this video, we're going to talk about chemical equation, beginning with chemical equation. And a chemical equation is defined as a symbolic representation of a chemical reaction in terms of a chemical formula. So the chemical reaction can be drawn out as a chemical formula, which is the chemical equation. So for example, here we have two molecules of sodium plus one molecule of chloride gas. Um, and the gas is represented by the small two beside chloride will make two sodium chlorides, salt. So the elements on the left are known as the reactants, and on the right, they're known as the products. This arrow pointing towards the product is the yield, the actual chemical reaction. And these numbers in front of each element, they're known as the coefficients. So here, they're coefficients. Also, chloride gas has one coefficient. And this coefficient, it tells us the number of molecules that element has or chemical unit. And it can even be moles. So for example, we have two moles of sodium, one mole of chloride gas. So let's look at another chemical reaction. So here we have two hydrogen gases plus oxygen gas, which will yield two H2Os, two molecules of water. And so the elements on the left are known as the reactants, and on the right, they're the products. And the arrow represents the yield. However, a reaction can also be reversible. For example, here we have two hydrogen iodides, which can yield um, hydrogen gas and iodide gas. But this reaction is reversible because of the two arrows pointing back and forth. So it can proceed forward or it can proceed backwards. Now let's look at stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is concerned with the relative amounts of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. So this also involves the coefficient and also the small number right below the elements. So let's look at an example for this. So here we have two molecules of butane. This is typically butane gas. Plus some 13 molecules of oxygen gas will yield eight molecules of carbon dioxide and also 10 molecules of water, H2O. Now, before I go further into explaining this chemical reaction, we can actually also specify matter. So we can specify matter. For example, if we look in the very first chemical reaction we had, where we had two sodium, two molecules of sodium, plus chloride gas, which is represented by small two below the chloride, will yield two molecules of sodium chloride. Now, these we can also specify matter in each of these um, compounds and elements. So for example, the sodium is a solid, so we write S. Chloride gas is a gas, so we write G. And the sodium chloride, the product, is also a solid, so we write S. So G represents gas, L represents liquid, S represents solid, and AQ also uh, is another type, which represents aqueous, which is essentially water or like the solution the elements are in, you can say. So back to the stoichiometry equation um, example we had with the butane. So butane gas, because it's typically a gas, we write G, not S, this is a mistake. And then for oxygen gas, it's a gas, so we write G. For carbon dioxide, that's also a gas, G. And for water, this is a liquid in this case, so we write L. Now let's look at separately each of the reactants and each of the products. So here, first of all, we have two molecules of butane gas. And then we have 13 molecules of oxygen gas. We have eight molecules, and the product, we have eight molecules of carbon dioxide. And the other product, we have 10 molecules of H2O, water. Now, the stoichiometric coefficients in front of the in front of each element ensures that the equation is balanced so looking at this chemical equation we we use a coefficient and the small numbers beside each element on the bottom and this small numbers tells us how many elements there are in that uh, compound you can say and so by timesing the coefficient with a small number on each element this tells us how many how many elements in total there is 
So for example, let's begin with the reactants. So for carbon, 2 times 4, we have 8 carbons. Hydrogen, 2 times 10, we have 20 hydrogens. Uh, for this oxygen, 13 times 2, we have 26 oxygens. And for the products, carbons, we have 8 carbons. Oxygen, we have 16, 8 times 2. Hydrogen, we have 10 times 2, 20 hydrogens. And oxygen, we have uh, just 10 oxygens. And so from this, we can see that we have 8 carbons on either side, we have 20 hydrogens on either side, and we have also 26 oxygens on either side. And therefore, this chemical equation is balanced because we have same amounts of elements on either side. However, chemical equations can also be unbalanced. So for example, here we have propane uh, plus oxygen, which are the reactants, will produce, will yield carbon dioxide and water, H2O. And as you can see, we have uh, one mole of propane, and let's just say we have one mole or molecule of oxygen, one molecule of carbon dioxide, and one molecule of H2O. And if we count the elements now, by multiplying the coefficient by the small number of each element, we have one times three, we have three carbons from the reactants. Uh, one times eight, we have eight hydrogens. One times two, we have two oxygens. And the products for carbons, we have one carbon, uh, 1 times 2, 2 oxygens, 1 times 2, 2 hydrogens, and 1 times uh, 1, 1 oxygen. And so if we total up all the numbers of elements in, um, in, in either side, we have 3 carbons in the reactants and only 1 carbon in the products, 2 oxygen in reactants and 3 oxygens in total in the products, 8 hydrogen reactants, and only 2 hydrogen products. And as you can see, all this is unbalanced. They do not balance out the reactants and products. So what we can do now is we can balance them, balance this uh, chemical equation up. And this process is known as balancing equation. So there's a few rules that we can follow. One is we first of all have to write out the unbalanced equation if we're given a question. And then we will balance uh, elements other than um, hydrogen or oxygen. And we will balance these last because usually they're the easiest to balance. And lastly, start with the most complicated looking formula and balance the elements in it by changing the coefficient in front of the formulas. This is wrong what I just wrote down. So yeah, balance the most complicated ones first. And so let's write the unbalanced chemical equation again. We have propane and oxygen as the reactants, one molecule of each, which will yield one molecule of carbon dioxide and one molecule of H2O. And as you can see, this chemical equation is unbalanced and as we and as we can see also that we have less carbon at the product side and so if we add 3 in um, as a coefficient in front of the carbon dioxide we will get uh, 3 carbons and 6 oxygens now and if we compare it to the right to the reactant side we have three carbons in each side, which is okay, but we have more oxygens on the left-hand side, the product side, and we have still less hydrogens in the product side. And so what we can do next is um, we will leave the three coefficient in front of carbon dioxide, but we can add a four uh, coefficient in front of H2O, which will mean that this will obtain, this will help us obtain uh, 4 times 2 hydrogens, which means 8 hydrogens, and also 4 oxygens. But, if we look, if we compare the reactants to the product side, we have 2 oxygens in the reactant side, and 10 oxygens in total in the product side, so it's still unbalanced. So if we write up, uh, so if we leave the 3 in front of the carbon dioxide and the 4 in front of H2O, we can then add a 5 in front of the oxygen gas in the reactant side, and so if we tally, tally all the elements up in total, in both sides, we'd have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and ten oxygens in the reactant side, and we'd have three carbons, um, eight hydrogens, and ten oxygens in total, also in the product side. And therefore, this equation is balanced. So now let's look at some more um, examples of balancing equations. Here we have calcium plus water, which will yield uh, calcium hydroxide and um, hydrogen gas. And now let's count up all each element in the both reactant and product side. We have one calcium, we have two hydrogens, one oxygen in the reactant side. We have one calcium, two oxygens, two hydrogens, and another two hydrogens in the product side. And so as we can see, 
this uh, equation is uh, very much unbalanced because we have an extra two hydrogens in the product side and an extra oxygen in the product side and therefore we'll try to balance this by adding some more hydrogens and oxygens to the reactant side. Let's just say we put a two coefficient in front of the water here and therefore if you count up all elements on either side again we have one calcium, four hydrogens, two oxygen in the reactant side and we have one calcium, two oxygens, two, ox two hydrogens and two hydrogens in the product side. And this chemical equation is balanced because we have the same amount of elements in either side. Let's look at a more complicated one, I guess, we could say. Here we have one molecule of carbonic acid plus one molecule of ammonium hydroxide, which will yield one molecule of ammonium carbonate uh, and one molecule of water, H2O. So if we count up all the elements in total in the reactant and product side, for carbonic acid here, we have two hydrogens, one carbon, and three oxygens. For ammonium hydroxide, we have one nitrogen, four hydrogen, one oxygen, and one hydrogen. And this will yield uh, the ammonium carbonate, which has two nitrogens, eight hydrogens, one carbon, and three oxygens. And water, plus water, which is just two hydrogens and one oxygen. So let's just count all of these elements up in total for both the reactant and product side. We have, first of all, seven hydrogens, one carbon, four oxygens, and one nitrogen in total in the reactant side. And in the product side, we have ten hydrogens, one carbon, four oxygens, and two nitrogens in total in the product side. And as you can see, we have more hydrogens and more nitrogens on the product side. And so we have to add uh, a coefficient in front of the nitrogen um, and the hydrogen on the reactant side. So for example, if we add a two coefficient in front of the ammonium hydroxide, and let's just count everything out up now, we would have now 12 hydrogens, one carbon, five oxygens, and two nitrogens in the reactant side. And in the product side, we'll, we'll still have 10 hydrogens, one carbon, four oxygens, and two nitrogens on the product side. And so we can, we can see that the nitrogens are balanced out, but now we have more hydrogens and uh, an extra oxygen on the reactant side. And so we can try to balance this out by, for example, adding a 2 in front of H2O in the product side. And so now, if we tally all the elements up in total, we would have 12 hydrogens, 1 carbon, 5 oxygens, and 2 nitrogens on the reactant side, and 12 hydrogens, 1 carbon, 5 oxygens, and 2 nitrogens also in the product side. And therefore, this equation is balanced. So we've successfully balanced this chemical uh, equation reaction. So I hope you understood the balancing equation process. There's a lot more difficult ones than these. Uh, next, we'll look at a bit more deeper into stoichiometry. Thank you.